This is Tembeli Donjana and you are listening to the K Jazz Show with Ongwako on Kofifi FM 97.2. The last hour of every Sunday of every month, of course, we sit at the feet of our favorite musicians. These are the musicians who have shaped the landscape of jazz as we know it. And to honor them, you know, we dedicate some time and reflect on the incredible work they've done and their contribution towards the noble sound. Our guest this Sunday is born on Chicago's west side. B. Alexandra is one of the city's most gifted and respected vocalists and songwriters. Her talents span every music genre from gospel to R&B, blues to neo-soul and Growing up in a household steeped in recordings of Dina Washington, Miss Alexandra names Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, and Chicago's saxophonist Henry Huff among her major influences, thus setting her on a path, you know, to becoming one of the most accomplished voice improvisers in the world today. Along with a phenomenal, you know, as a, rather being a phenomenal headliner, she's also shared stages with the likes of Ahmad Jamal, David Sanborn, Roy Ayers, Joshua Redman and the OJs. And of course, she's also a host of the Sunday Jazz with D. Alexandra and is our cover story this Sunday.
Welcome to South Africa and welcome to Coffee Fee FM 97.2. So happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And of course, we're really excited to be spending time with you today. You know, you were voted um, the best singer by by uh, Chicago Magazine and Jazz Entertainer of the Year at the Chicago Music Awards. And of course, you are the recipient of the Chicagoan of the Year in Jazz. You know, so I want our fellowship to actually begin in Chicago. You know, please do tell you know about the early days of D. Alexander growing up in Chicago. What was that experience like? Well, I, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my mother because my mother is the person that actually started me on this path mm. by first initially, I have two brothers, uh, just exposing us to music and the arts as children, always having music playing. Our house was very colorful, always wonderful smells from food, you know, um, and just, we were always in art classes, music classes. And mm-hmm. my mother basically had like those influences you mentioned, Dinah Washington, Sarah Vaughn. And I also have to add John Coltrane. I'm influenced by musicians as well. That music was always playing in the home as well as on Sundays, we got our, our dose of gospel music as well yeah. and our throughout the week (laughs) but there was always music playing and those were my first influences just laying in bed and listening to my mother's music while she ironed you know (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Um, it started with my mom exposing us to the music and the love just grew it was like she planted the seed the roots grew and then the tree is just growing and the limbs are outstretched above and beyond. (laughs) I love it I love it of course you know would you say growing up in that household did you find jazz or did jazz find you? You know what? That's a that's a very good question. Hmm. Um, as I said, my mother always had the jazz playing in, in the in the household when we were growing up. And I remember loving it from the very beginning. It wasn't something that I had to grow into. I remember loving the voices of the singers. I remember loving the improvisation of the of the saxophone players and even mimicking them as a child, you know mimicking John Coltrane solos, you know. Um, so it was something that was just embedded in my DNA, thanks to my mom. <laughs> so. I discovered, Musti, your music after being introduced to the project Wild as the Wind, you know, which earned you a five-star review, by the way, by Downbeat Magazine. Let's talk about that project and the creative process behind it. I mean, Howard Reich of uh, the Chicago Tribune highlighted that in this body of work, you sang with interpretive depth and dramatic power, you know, forcing mm-hmm. the listener to, to sit up and pay attention. Oh boy, did we, you know, let's reflect yeah. on that. Yes. Well, first and foremost, I have to uh, give thanks for the musicians that I that I was working with at the time. Um, Miguel De La Serna, Harrison Bankhead, Ernie Adams, Leon Joyce Jr. I was playing with these musicians on a regular basis and we were working. We were working. And I think that the best way to really get your music down is by performing your music and breathing life into it. Um, everyone, and I, it's not all about me, the musicians, it, it's it's always a collaboration with the musicians. I have to give them credit, especially Miguel, uh, my uh, musical director, you know, and, and my cohort and friend, we have such a great time, but he is always the voice of reason. He kind of helps me along the way, you know, with, with those particular projects with Wild as the Wind yeah. and so mother loves um songs my mother loves obviously i wanted to pay tribute to my mother and the music that she exposed me to while i still have her you know and i still have her she's still alive and well wonderful and wild is the wind is kind of like a tribute to my mentor like henry huff and also to the music of nina simone as well as my own original music Lord, I'm still praying. 
Take me back where I belong Oh, lonesome me Why can't you see Let's bygones be
Coffee Fever and Brother, we're spending time with Miss D. Alexander. She's Chicago's finest jazz vocalist and radio host, and she's also a cover story this Sunday. You've collaborated, you know, with so many wonderful, talented artists without necessarily wanting to put you on the spot. Now, you know, who, or in fact, which collaboration is as right up there with your career highlights? Oh, there you go, putting me on the spot. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Let's see. Shoot, I've worked with so many people. Um, I just, I think first and foremost, one of the greatest highlights of my career was when I actually performed um, a concert here in Chicago. And I want to say it was 2012. I may be wrong with the date, but I did a concert here and it was Sirens of Song, yeah. a tribute to Nina and Dinah. And the interesting thing about that concert, uh, we did put our heart and soul into it. We had uh, a string section. We also included a children's choir with that performance. Yeah. And the very first time that we were supposed to perform, we got rained out because it was an outdoor performance. And everyone was so disappointed because we put, I mean, our heart, soul, body, everything into this project. And so since I was the leader of this whole thing, I had to be, I was dying inside, but I had to remain poised, you know, with a smile on my face, like, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm dying inside. There's children. There's like a, a 50 piece children's choir that I had to stay, you know, I had to stay poised for. Yeah. And my musicians. But Miguel, my my musical director, he was so disappointed. He just went and just sunk down into a chair. You know, he was yeah. just so disappointed. But the beauty of it, at the time, there was a wonderful woman down at the uh, D case, Helen Doria. She's no longer with us now. But she called me the next day and said, D, we really love you and we love this project and we would we would be honored if you would present this project. We have three dates that we have available. And I'm thinking, you know, later on next year sometime, they said, oh, no, we have three dates coming up within the next couple of months. Right. And that I ended up doing it on, believe it or not, September 11th when we oh. had that here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and it was there was also Stevie Wonder was in town. So a lot of people that bought and his it, the interesting thing Stevie Wonder's concert his concert got rained out as well so his mm -hmm. concert they re they had to, his concert the same night that I had mine and a lot of people didn't make it to my concert because yeah. they had tickets and they re you know reissued them for that concert mm -hmm. but there were so many people there it was just um it's the cover of my of the Wild Is the Wind with the that's the cover from that concert from that night. Wow. Folks were taken from that night from that concert. And that was when, and, and, and my friend Light Henry Huff, who uh, he um, is a great inspiration, a great influence. Uh, and I, he, when he passed, he, before he passed, he asked me to take care of his music. Yeah. So I got his music copywritten, published, and no sooner than the ink dried, all of these beautiful things started happening for, for me. So I'm really indebted to the spirit of Light Henry Huff. I think that he's speaking to God on my behalf, you know, to, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. in the journey, this musical journey. Uh, so then I had an opportunity to travel, to do a lot. I came to South Africa. I mean, I, yeah. enjoy it. I came to South Africa. I went to Italy. I just just traveling all over the world presenting this music. And it's just been wonderful.
it here, we play it there. It's on the street, it's on the air. We play it quick, we make it last. We call it blues, we call it jazz. 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 KJS Show, Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2. You know, the jazz space, D, um, has always been male dominated. And mm-hmm. female performers were often, you know, relegated to being backing vocalists and support acts and not usually seen as band leaders or, or maybe even the central part of the ensemble. How did you navigate this, you know, in your career? I navigated it by being a lady with a smile on my face, not being afraid to say no. And and it has worked for me. Um, things have been very, I, I, have to, I have to say that I've been really blessed in this business. And I come from, my mother always said, you know, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. Yeah. So I try to, um, in negotiating with people and, and just negotiating through the music world, always trying to be a stand-up person, even though we know that there's a lot of, a lot of um, unreasonable individuals in the, music, in the music world, I still managed to surround myself with a, group, a, a great group of people, namely my musicians. And then I have a, a, a Michonne that works for me as well, yeah. Michonne Hart. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's on my behalf. I, she takes care of a lot of the business for me, so I don't have to deal with a lot of the business. I just concentrate basically on the artistic end. And I've been having a great time artistically. I really have. It's been wonderful. And I'm really happy to see so many young female artists that are Cecile McLaurin Salvat, Jasmine yes. Horn, yes. Uh, Esperanza Spalding, these wonderful women that are taking charge and taking this music. A storm, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Nicole Mitchell, mm. uh, Tamika Reed, uh, Dr. Jovia Armstrong. These women are are accomplished women, composers, musicians, and they, you know, we go through it and we come through it with a smile because sometimes we do have the powers that be that kind of you know give us a little hard time, but we always come out on top. Yeah. So it's yeah. Women rule. I mean, it could be male dominated, but the, the birth of the, the birth of all of this is through us. So absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> I agree. I do agree, and still on that, you know, August yeah. in South Africa is uh, is uh, it's a time where we commemorate, you know, women in different industries, and you know, within these conversations, we're also looking to uplift women, especially within the creative space. Now, looking mm-hmm. back at your career, you know, would you say that things have improved since you know you? became an active musician as it were or are women finding themselves you know having a different struggle in 2023 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that well some things have proved have improved and some things are still the same i mean it's yeah there are some things that have improved in terms of like visibility for women uh but sometimes we have to work a little bit harder to to let the powers that be know that we belong here yeah that we're part of this and this music industry wouldn't be the way that it is without us. So <laughs> I may get some pushback from that, but yeah. Lord, make me a sailor Deep into the sea And the waves and the 
and the boat and the sails to shelter me. Take me far from this dry land. I've had more than I can stand, and I won't trouble no more. Take the wolves from my door. Let me sail away upon the sea. On the way to be free. On the way. Care in the world as you watch me fly on by. I'm up here where I belong. Can't you hear my sweetest song? And I won't trouble no more. Take the wolves from my door. Let me sail away up on the sea. On the way to be free.
KJS Show, Sundays on Kofifi FM 97.2. Why bother with conversation? Don't let's talk or even walk If you want to make love okay It's too hot for words There's nothing like a relaxation Can't ignore this temperature If you want to make love it's okay Closing nook beside a babbling brook. Let's find a shady tree. Let the love birds talk for you and me. Mm, it's too hot for words. Why bother with conversation? Goodness knows my heart disputes. All it dares to say. I'm still with Miss D. Alexander here on the KJ Show. She's the cover story, and she shared a couple of music with uh, pieces of music with us this Sunday. Tell us about these songs. You know, um, why specifically these songs? Because there's some of because there's some of my favorite songs, um, songs from the heart. For example, a "Lonesome Lover" from songs my mother loves. Yeah, that was recorded. Abby Lincoln is one of my sheroes, as well as Oscar Brown Jr., who was from Chicago. Yeah, one of my heroes. And he composed that song. And then Abby Lincoln's delivery is just incredible. Yeah. So I wanted to, we kind of, I, I like to, whenever I do a cover, a song that someone has covered, 
we add our own little seasonings to it, if you will. Correct. Uh, because of course they've done it their way, then we just kind of reinterpret it or reimagining. That's the that's the new thing now. Reimagined it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Gotta and, get the lingo right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I love doing that. I, I love reimagining uh, compositions. I love putting lyrics to songs that have already been, you know, recorded by great musicians. I love doing that as well. Uh, for example, I love doing uh, Carmen McRae is also another one of my uh, sheroes, and she did this tribute to yeah. Thelonious Monk. And Carmen yeah. sings, Monk, and I love her take on the the Monk compositions with a lot of the lyrics by John Hendrix, you know, and, and other yeah. great uh, songwriters. But I love doing that as well. Currently, I have to tell you, mm. um, I'm collaborating with a I'm working with a group out of Chicago, the Chicago Soul Jazz Collective. Uh, and they are a wonderful group of musicians. Mr. John Fournier is the leader, and he is also the composer, and he writes all the lyrics to the tunes. And so during COVID, um, he called me up, and we did, as we're doing right now, through through Zoom. We yeah. had Zoom rehearsals and Zoom meetings, uh, and he would play some of the music on the piano for me, and I'd let him know, oh, I like that. Yeah, oh, no, I don't, that's, that, that's not really me. Yeah. And we're we're getting ready to do a performance next weekend here in Chicago on the Chicago Jazz Festival. And uh, it'll be their first time performing in Millennium Park on the Pritzker Pavilion stage. So they're very excited about that. Wow. Just a great guys. Yeah. yeah. Another collaboration that I'm doing, I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, is with the Metropolitan Jazz Octet. And we did the It's Too Hot for Words, a tribute mm. to Billy Hot. Another great group. I mean, I have such, even though this is a male dominated industry, I have so many men in this industry that are, they treat me like either the big sister or the mama or yeah. auntie, you know? So yeah. I have a lot of support from a lot of the men in, especially here in Chicago. And, um, but that con that uh, collaboration is also one from the heart and, we our aim was to select songs that Billie Holiday performed, but they were really obscure because everybody is familiar with them, their eyes, and God bless the child. We wanted to teach the audience about this huge discography of Billie Holiday's. So we had listening sessions, and some things ended up on the cutting floor. But um, but I, I'm very happy with with the outcome of this project, and they're talking about doing another one as well. But before yeah. I go any further, right. I'm currently with a gentleman by the name of John McLean. And we have a project called the Alexander McLean Project. And John McLean uh, worked with great, he's a, he's, a, he's a wonderful guitarist, composer, arranger, and he's worked with Grajana Agustic. He's worked with Kurt Elling. Um, he's worked with a lot of great vocalists. So he is a vocalist dream because... He's familiar with working with vocalists. That's it's very important when you collaborate with someone that they kind of understand where the vocalist is coming from and understand their voice and their capabilities as well. So we're working on a project right now that we've been working on since COVID. COVID threw a wrench into it, it but did. we're still finishing it up. You know, so I got a lot of things that are going on. It's <laughs> you sound very busy. You're very busy. I mean, I'm trying to ask you the next thing because I was I wanted to know, like before we were saying off air, you know, um, when is the next D solo coming up? You know, and you're so busy already. We're working on that right now because John McLean and I are co-collaborators and composers as well. So yeah. we're getting together and um uh, and we really have a great body of work and I'm very excited about it. And we really love what's the, the outcome of it. And I think that you will as well. Oh, so yes, we're yes, planning, yes, yes. we're trying to get this thing out by the end of the year. I mean, we've been working on it for three years. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's time and we're working on it. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> well, you know where to send it first, right? Yes. 
Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Miss D, thank you so much for taking out the time to spend with us as a cover story here this Sunday. And we really, really enjoyed spending time with you. And I think I'm certain, you know, just like me, you know, the audience also enjoyed getting to know you a little bit better. And the only thing now that's left, you know, is to see you perform in South Africa again. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> and it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. I'm, I'm so certain that it will. Yeah, because she <laughs> yeah. is Chicago's finest jazz vocalist, Miss Miss D. Alexandra, and she's also a radio host, by the way. Where yes. can we catch podcasts? Can we catch podcasts? Can we listen? How do we do it? If you you can catch my show, my show comes on Sunday nights here in, in Sunday nights. It's Sunday Jazz with D. Alexander, mm. and you can stream it uh, www.wdcb.org, mm. and it comes on from eight until 10 p.m. Central Standard Time here in the United States in Chicago. Right. right. So I'm not sure what the time difference, I don't remember the time difference. Are we, how many hours, are, are we 12 hours apart? I think it's four. Just, <laughs> just four well, hours? Yeah, EST is four, yeah. And oh, that's okay. the standard time, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think I must be thinking about Australia or something. I don't know. <laughs> All these hey, it takes a good <laughs> One hours for us to get there too, so that's quite far anyway. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely that's far. But thank you yeah. so much for joining us, and of course, uh, once again, she's uh, Chicago's finest jazz vocalist, songwriter, radio host, Miss D. Alexandra, and she was on the K Jazz Show. <laughs> You're nothing but a dirty, dirty old man. You do your thinking with a one-track mind. Keep talking about heaven glory, but on your face is a different story. Clean up your rap, your story's getting dusty. Wash out your mouth, your lies are getting dusty. Can't believe nothing you say, cause I'm around and I see what you do, you know you're funkier than a mosquito's tweeter, you got a mouth like a herd of bull weavers, same old game, same old thing, you never change, always rapping about the same old thing. That you ain't hip to, baby. Blowing minds is a thing of the past. You blew your chance, that's why you never last. You want to be a graduated mother, but in reality, you're just another brother. You think you're slick, but you could stand a lot of greasing. The things you do ain't never really pleasing. Nothing you say Cause I'm around and I see what you do You know you're funkier than a mosquito tweeter You got a mouth like a herd of bullies Same old game, same old thing Always rapping about the same old thing A pot of baked stew Nothing worse than an educated fool Talking sex is your favorite conversation But peace and love is a famous generation What's in your head has really started showing Your conversation is getting kind of boring Can't believe nothing
nothing you say. Cause I'm around and I see what you do. You know you're funkier than a mosquito's tweeter. You got a mouth like a herd of bold wieners. Same old game. Same old game. Stand up. 